Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the lightsaber tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create masks in Blender to mask out the areas like the head of the player that are in front of the lightsaber plate. To do that we move into Blender's movie clip editor and we load up our video file. It's already I've already loaded it for the viewport in 3D, so I can choose it right here. If that's not the case, you'd have to open it via the file browser. So now that we have our video, we should you can play it by Alt A. And as you can see, right from the first frame on, we need a mask to mask out his head because the plate or his baseball bat is behind that. First of all, a mask will always be attached to one of these objects. And I just find it's not completely necessary for that, but I always create a new object and call that um, masks, so I don't attach my masks to the camera object because the camera object is normally used to recreate a 3D scene for camera tracking, so it's just a bit cleaner to use a separate object. Then I switch over to masking mode and create a new mask. I will call this head and then begin by control left clicking to place some uh, some points and with alt C I can close the mask or open it up again. And if your mask handles point into the inside of the mask, you can fix that by clicking switch direction. It happens sometimes depending on if you place the uh, single points clockwise or counterclockwise. And when working with, with masks, if you need completely straight lines and not curved ones, you can select one of these points by right clicking on it, press V and change it from aligned to vector and that will create completely straight, li uh, straight lines. I of course want them to be aligned. Oh, maybe even better auto no auto makes it doesn't have many options to adjust it so like this by pressing a you can deselect all ma uh, all of these handles or select them all and when working with, with masks, make sure when you go from frame to frame to place the mask always on the same object, make sure that you have auto, free, uh, auto keyframe creation activated. That's down here. And I'm not sure, do I have it activated right now? Um. should be activated. Now by pressing G you can move around the mask in its entirety if you have all selected by pressing A. So and of course I have not activated automatic keyframing 
apparently because there is no yellow line appearing right here. Is it? Why isn't? <clears throat> Apparently there aren't any yellow lines appearing in the timeline for mask keyframes but they are appearing, uh, appearing here in this blue line under our video. Didn't notice that so far. Ah, yes. As you can see, they are appearing right here. I was confused for a bit because they don't show up strangely enough in the timeline. So you just go frame by frame forward and always move the mask for his head back into place. And maybe adjust the shape whenever it's necessary. Press G to move all the mask. Now I guess you get the principle and on the final frame when we don't need the head mask to accidentally uh, cover up something that we don't want to, want to have covered up, just move it out of the picture and so it will only be visible for the frames we need. And then as soon as the baseball bat isn't behind the helmet anymore. I moved it upwards and there it's going to stay for the rest of the video. Now of course you would have to insert key for, uh, another mask for his body right here. You can either create a new mask by clicking this plus sign here or with the mask that you've already created you could ask another mask layer right here. And the advantage to that is that you only, instead of later using different input nodes to input the different masks, as you would have to do if you create a completely new mask, the mask layers are tied to the same mask and can be imported with a single node. Um, maybe I should demonstrate that just for test purposes I will create a mask right here it 
click Control c and it's set to merge add so it will be added to the mask layer that's above it i will have it visible for one frame and no 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 just this one and move it out of frame At frame 17 it will be visible and it won't be visible on all the other frames. Okay, now we have that and we go into the node editor. Let me quickly save that. And to import the mask you click or you press shift A, import mask and select head down here. Let me maximize that. You select the head mask that you've created and on frame one, it's visible. It moves as you can see. And on frame 17, we should see that test mask, test mask that I've created. And it's right up there where it should be. And it's only visible for one frame. That's great. Go back to frame one. And let's use this mask to cut out from our plate. To do that, we can simply Use a mix node and I guess let me quickly see this. We have a, the mask is white, so we could we could use a multiply node, but then we'd have to invert the mask. By, by the way, I'm cutting the mask out after I have added the vector blur, so it won't um, it won't affect the vector blur, but all the other blur nodes behind it. But as you can see here, we have a problem. The mask seems to cut out something here at the end of the plate while it should be about in the first half but there should be definitely something visible of the handle. What's going wrong? As you can see here the mask input is set to scene size but our video we have used fit to render size that's why these um, black bars appear right here so the dimensions don't fit up because the mask is, is stretched out to the render size but our video gets these black bars to fix that we change the mask size to fixed and set it to the exact video dimensions, which happen to be uh, uh, 720 by 480. And then we simply duplicate the scale to render size and fit node. And now it all matches up. Now, if we give this a quick render, it's of course I will have to connect this to all the blur nodes right here and this one. And now you can see 
the head is masked out. And because we have added the blur node of the glow after we've masked out the head, we get a little bit of the screen glow over his head. I find that's quite nice. That's basically it for masking, but let me show you one quick variation for the color of the lightsaber. As you can see here, I had used a color node on the biggest blur right here and then added the non-colored uh, versions of the plate over that. But let me mute this node. Uh, not hide, mute. You could also use a color mix node and set it to overlay. Input the complete plate and then set a color right here. And that way you would have the color of the plate after you've created all this glow effect and not in between it. It is a little bit cl um, cleaner of a setup, but it doesn't make much difference visually. Simply a matter of preference, I'd say. Here the green effect seems to be a little bit stronger, but overall it's not much of a difference. So much for the lightsaber effect. And I hope you learned something. That's all. See you next time and goodbye.